But let's look more at one of the derivative standards for the ISO 26262. But why do we need another standard? Well, we had IEC 61508. This covered electronic and electrical systems. But why do we need another standard? Well, ISO 26262 is aimed specifically at the automotive industry. It covers the whole product life cycle, including a production aspect. And the ISO 26262 has been created by a number of national research centres across Europe and the world within the automotive industry. So this is a standard which has been put together by experts and should be considered for use. It's also been brought in from November 20, 2011 that all new cars, all new software that will be developed from November 2011 must adhere to this standard. The title of this standard is a bit more catchy, Road Vehicles Functional Safety. It's been derived from the IEC 61508 to address specific issues. And this covers electronic and electrical systems in series production passenger road vehicles. So it doesn't include, at the moment, trucks and buses, for example, or specialist adaptations of cars for, say, disabled drivers. This is the series production road vehicles. You'll see some mention out on the web about the draft international standard, the DIS, which was published in mid-2009. And some tool vendors have even claimed compliance to this draft standard. The final draft standard was published in early 2011 and has been finally ratified in November. There were some differences between the draft standard and the final standard, so that's something else to watch out for. For the IEC 61508, we had the safety integrity levels, SIL levels 1 through 4. But for ISO 26262, intentionally different, they've called them the ASIL levels, automotive safety integrity levels. And these are lettered A through D, where A is the lowest and D is the highest automotive safety integrity level. Now this slide is just a visual aid so that you can see A is the lowest, 1 is the lowest, D is the highest and 4 is the highest. There's no direct comparison between ASIL levels and SIL levels because they're different standards. But some people say that the ASIL D level, ASIL D level can be compared to the IEC 61508 SIL level 3. But again, there's no direct comparison, so you can't say just because you have one, you therefore have the other. This is something that needs to be done separately and certified separately. The different sections within the ISO 26262, there are 10 different sections, split a bit more than the IEC 61508. And again, we'll be focusing on the software level in particular. Again, we have these compliance tables, tables of requirements, and the same numbering format as we had before for the IEC 61508. So because we have one A through H, these are all, these can be added in separately, they don't all need to be adhered to. But those which are highly recommended, you should have a good reason for, for not adhering to that particular topic. So for example, enforcement of low complexity here has been highly recommended, as you can see denoted by the two plus signs, single recommendation with a single plus sign, or no recommendation for or against. For example, defensive implementation techniques you can see for ASIL level A, there's no recommendation. In the standard at this point, they mention a coding standard, they mention the MISRA-C coding standard as an example of a language subset. It by no means tell you, tells you that you have to use MISRA or even recommends the use of MISRA. It just tells you that MISRA-C is a language subset. But you'll notice on the next slide here, where we have table 8, again numbered 1A through 1J, that most of these rules you'll see, in fact all of them, are MISRA-C rules. You'll see again some of them are highly recommended, Imagine so the initialization of variables, for example. So you're strongly pointed towards the MISRA-C standard. This makes sense because MISRA-C is the automotive standard and the ISO 26262 is the automotive process standard. 
And for those of the those are the entries which are highly recommended, you should qualify why you aren't going to choose one of these methods. The method you use to verify these requirements must also be qualified. So how you go about showing that you have met the requirement of limited use of pointers, for example. Well, you need to provide evidence somehow that the method you've used is suitable for use in a safety critical project. And also show that you have confidence that the method that, you're, that you've chosen, the method that you're using, correctly proceeds and it doesn't introduce bugs while it's doing the execution. So for a small piece of code, say 100 lines or so, you would be able to do this with manual inspection. You can have a high confidence that you know exactly what the code is doing and again that your inspection isn't producing any bugs within your code itself. But for any large code base, it's difficult to do this, and software automation is really the only effective option. So if you're going to choose a software tool to verify that you use limited use of pointers, for example, or no recursion, then how would you go about choosing a software tool? Well, there are different qualification methods that you can use, and these are taken from the standard. So you can have different confidence from use, for example. Or you could evaluate the development process of the tool. This also goes for your own software as well. You should need to show validation of the software tool to validate that the software tool is indeed doing what the software tool says it will do. And whether the tool has been developed in compliance with a safety standard. So you've chosen a tool. Or how do you choose a tool? Well, you could choose an uncertified tool, say an in-house tool, and you could certify it yourself. But this takes time and costs money. Or you could choose a professional tool from a respected company that's been used in the industry for some time, and users will have come up with bugs or errors, and it will have been improved over time. This will give you the confidence from use. Maybe the respected company, they use a development process which has been evaluated by other means, say ISO 9001. Or because they've been in industry a long time, you would expect that they would have evaluated their development process. You could look at the validation of the software tool yourself. This, again, takes a lot of time and therefore costs quite a lot of money. Alternatively, you could choose a tool that's been certified by a specialist certification company. They will have come in and they would have had a look at the development process themselves and they would have made sure that the software tool has been validated. 